for your grace and for your mercy and for all that you do. I thank you, Father, for this hour that you have given us and, and where you have brought us from and how you are constantly and continually developing and growing us up in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so we bless you today, Father, as we move forward, thanking you for that which you shall speak to our hearts today. Our hearts are open. We give attention unto you, Father, that we might hear and do. And certainly we give you the praise and give you all the glory in the name of Jesus the Christ our Lord. And everybody said amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Welcome, welcome. We welcome our viewing audience. God bless you. Thank you so much for your commitment to the kingdom. Let us labor together to get this done. Amen. Praise God. Well, how goes the battle? Oh, we're running, running strong, running strong. Hallelujah. Praise God. I know I am. Got my mind made up. I've decided I'm going to go ahead and run this through and do what God called us to do. God does have a word for us today, and uh, we're, we're continuing on the subject of growing our health, growing, growing our health. And this is a, well, it's an endless subject, so we can just stay with it however long we stay and let God speak to our hearts. Let's go ahead and look at the Word of God. I want to begin at the fourth chapter of Romans, and, and let's take a look at this. We are always in the growth mode from the time, and, and that's growth is not, an, it's not a human effort. The Bible says over in 1 Peter 1, 2, 1 Peter 2, 2, it says that you know, as newborn babes desire to send the milk of the word, that we may grow thereby. And so uh, understanding growth is, is, you know, most of us understand we, we have experienced growth, uh, spiritual growth and uh, physical growth. The principles are the same. And so we understand the uh, natural physical growth process, a child is born. All of us have experienced that. I mean, you was a child one time yourself. I mean, what do you, you may not believe it, but you were. But anyway, uh, we, have, we have experienced children. So they're what? They're born, and then, all, and then over a period of time, they become adults. Well, how does that happen? Well, God has already pre-established the way that it's supposed to happen. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is just follow the principles of growth, and growth is automatic. A child is born, and he, uh, you, you, you have to nurture it and feed it. Babies always require a supervision, whether it's a, an animal, whether it's a human baby, whether it's whatever it is, in a baby, anything requires supervision. Amen. And so a baby is born. So we understand, we can understand the growth uh, process by looking at a human physically, naturally, a baby is born and it's what? You, 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 they get so much attention. Isn't it amazing the amount of attention you give them? Well, they need that, you know, because they, 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 they're helpless. They just, they just got here. They're in a foreign world. Yes. They're in a world that they've never been in before. And they need somebody that's already here to coach them, develop them so that they can manage themselves. And so we, we, we tend to them. You know, what, what mothers really get a real picture of that. And, you, you know, you ladies that have had babies, I never had one. But you ladies that have had babies, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's so intimate. That little child that you hold there and then you so care for it and then you feed it and, you, you know, you just tenderly care for it. And over a period of time, that child will grow. Now, you know that you don't have anything to do with the growth. There is a part for you to play. But you, you have nothing to do with the actual growth itself. You, you know, you, you feed, the, you know the proper food 
to feed the child, and you feed the child the food. But there is a built-in mechanism by God that causes the food to be turned from, you know, from natural food into growth, and it develops and it grows that child. And, and if you notice, it's, a not, it's not an accelerated, speedy process. It's a gradual process. You bring a baby home from the hospital today, he looks the same tomorrow and the next day. Over a period of time, if you properly care for it, it will look different. But mothers, you know you never could sit there and stare at that child and see it grow. You never did that. But over a period of time, six months from the time you bring it home, it may look a little bit different, not all that much. Then I have another six months, it may look a little different, you know. But, but my point is that it's a, it's a gradual process, and it's, and it's slow. And then all of a sudden, things are maybe two years old, so, so two years old, they're probably up and running around a little bit. You know, well, they never walked before, because, but they have to start. They have to learn how to walk. If you notice, then when they start walking, they don't just jump and walk. Most of them start crawling. I don't know any of them that just went from lap to running. I don't know, I think, but they crawl. You know, then, you know, they ever hear the old saying, you got to crawl before you walk? <clears throat> well, they crawl. They crawl around, and all of a sudden, one day, they'll just look up, and they're standing upright. A little wobbly, but they're standing there. And they may make a track and fall back down. Well, you don't get discouraged and upset about that. You just keep feeding it. You just keep feeding it. And one day you'll see him just keep standing there. And it'll make a track or two. You are just as content as you can be. And then another day it'll just it'll make a few steps, more, more steps. And then, then it'll just, just, just keep, keep standing up. But my point in saying all of that, it's a slow, gradual process, but the constancy of your care and feeding is ongoing. You never cease that. And then all of a sudden, then, then one day, it'll, it'll, it'll start running. But, you know, we just, then it'll just grow. And then it just, and it just keep growing. She's keep growing, keep growing, keep growing. You know, one day, you take it down to the school bus. And there he is. They put him on the bus. You know, it's been about six years since that happened. But that's a long time. You didn't bring him down to the bus stop the first day you brought him home from the hospital. Remember that? Yeah, I'm, what am I saying? I'm trying to get us to see and understand the growth process. Now, let's go back to that text there. Let's go back to that scripture there in, in 2 Peter 2. 2 uh, 1 Peter, 1 Peter 2, 2. 1 Peter 2, 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Now, look at it. You see that? As newborn babes. Now, that's not, he's not talking about a physical baby. That's the spirit baby. As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may do what? Same principle. Now, John 3, 3. You go back to John, John chapter 3 and verse 3 there, and it'll tell you about the new birth. Jesus answered and said to him, and most surely I say to you, unless one is born again. Now, see, the baby you brought home from the hospital, that wasn't, that was born the first time. The same process that you took. But you got to get born again. But this is not a spirit. This is not a physical birth. This is called the new birth. It's called a spiritual birth. You are born again. He cannot see the kid. Since he's born again, you can't see the kid. So you got to be born again to even connect with God. You got to get born again. Born again to be in God's family. Born of the Spirit. That physical baby that you brought home from the hospital, that's good, that's good, that's good. But he got to get born again. Like you, one day you came from the hospital. I guess if you, if you were born in the hospital, you meant I didn't been born in the hospital. You know what I mean? But anyway, <coughs> you was born the first time, but then you got to get born again. Well, we all of us in this room will, will acknowledge that we have been what? Born again. Well, how do you get born again? Well, that's a mystery. It's just as much mystery. It's more of a mystery to do that second birth is the first one. You can't even understand the first one. It's a mystery. I don't know how the world it happened, but there's a transformation down in there somewhere. And it takes place. <coughs> and all of a sudden, after nine months, I tell you, there's a little something pop out there. You know, I don't know. How did it happen? I don't know. 
I have no idea. I, I do not know how, how that all that just formed and just miraculously became a human being. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm the first to say I don't know. But, I, but it does. It happens. Well, how does the second birth take place? I don't know either. Here again, I do not know. All I know is that you do there's certain things that you do that, that you can do on your part that will cause a new birth. There are certain things in the beginning on the first birth. There are certain things you can do. There are certain things that's required in order to have a birth. And, there, and you're going to do all of that if, you're not do, if you don't do those, two th those, those things that's required. You do to have a first birth, you're not going to have one. See, God set all of this up. You know, you've got to be a fool to say there is no God. You've got to be just a flat F double O L. How in the world can you have all of this without somebody bigger than you? Amen. You're so smart. Okay, go have you a baby. Go, go, go make you one. You can't do it. You cannot do it. And this is in the natural. This is in the natural. Now, you can't even understand the natural. Well, if you can't understand that, how in the world are you going to get a whole handle on the spiritual birth? You can't even handle the natural birth. But my point in saying all of this is to get us, give us understanding uh, that you, you know, this is all of God. And so God said you must be born again. The point that I'm trying to get across to is that we have to be born again, and then we have to feed the same principle as the first birth is the second birth. You have to feed, and then you have to grow in this grace of Jesus Christ. That's all I'm trying to get to to help us to see and understand there is a supernatural process in growing spiritually and developing. Now, now that we have that set up, now, we, everything that we need in order to be totally successful and to grow spiritually on this earth right now as children of God Everything has been given to us that's re that is necessary or that is required for us to become mature in the faith. You are born again. You, we are born of the Spirit of God. Yeah. I can't see with my natural eyes the new person that you are. I can't see it. You can't see me. I'm, I, I'm a new creature in Christ. I'm born again. I'm a spirit being. I'm a spirit being. I live inside of this body. I'm, I'm real. I'm real. I'm a spirit being that lives inside this body. How do I know all of this? All of this is, is, is by faith. And so all I'm doing, I'm trying to get around to, what, to God teaching us. God is the one that teaches us faith. The new birth, we get born again. Now, the new me will never die. This old me, this physical Owen, he was born. He's about 77 and some change. He's 77 years old plus right now. He, he, he's eventually going to leave this earth. But the new me, the real me, I'm going to live forever. I am never going to die because I'm made out of the same stuff that God's made out of. I'm born of the Spirit of God. I am more real. The, the Spirit Owen, the Spirit me, is more real than the natural me. The natural me is so limited to God. He can only be in one place at one time. But the new one can it be better, bigger than that. Amen. He can be, he can go where he can be where anywhere he wants to go. He don't have, he's not restricted. The real Owen is not restricted. But this physical one is not restricted. Now, that's see, that's really what our problem is. Now, <clears throat> in order for me to function and operate on the earth, you know, as a, you know, my physical body need me inside of it. My physical body right now. See, that's why I can't leave it. Nobody leaves, you know, like, like your little baby. You, you don't leave your baby by itself. It wouldn't last long. I cannot leave my body. Amen. Because if I leave my body, it's, it, it's dead. The body without the spirit is what? D-E-A-D. -E it needs me. Amen. It needs me. So I have to stay in this thing until... I finish my labor on the earth. 
Now, when I finish my labor on the earth, then I will exit it. I don't need it anymore. And when I leave out, the thing going to crumple up and fall. Whatever you do with it, you do it, do it whatever you want to do. But I'm not there. Amen. I'm out and gone. You, you follow what I'm saying? But now while I'm still in this body, I have to grow. And the more I grow, the more understanding that I have in reference to becoming more and more like Jesus so that I can effectively impact other people so that they can get born again and grow as well as I did. You see why we're here? See, otherwise, if you, if you didn't need to, if, 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 the, if nobody else on the earth, if everybody was born again, ha, we could be out of here. They don't need to hang around here. You know, we're not just hanging around here just because it's nice. We're here because there, we're here because there are people here that God loves. And you know what? He loves all of us. So the Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He said that he is not willing that one person should perish but that all should come to repentance. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Don't you want to love people the same way? Well, bless God, we are destined to do that. We are to love people the same. I don't want anybody lost. God doesn't want anybody lost, neither do I. See? And so we are here. We have to stay here, and we have to grow, and we have to help help other people to see Jesus so that they can get born again. And so all of this to show you, to to, to bring to what we want to talk about, we want to talk about the, 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 the necessity and the need and the way that we grow so that we can effectively feed ourselves with the word of God and, and grow. You know, they, <coughs> they have classes, mothering, I don't know what they call them. You know, when they, ladies, you know, young, young, young women get married, they don't know much. But they teach them, they have class to show them how to handle the babies, how to, you know, how to manage the babies. And so how to grow them. Well, well, this is kind of a class to show you how to grow you. Because you don't know how. Because you just you got born again. And you need somebody to, that's already that's bigger than you to show you how to do it. Are you still here? Just like a baby needs somebody that know more than they know. If you just drop a baby off here on the earth by himself with nobody to help him, he wouldn't last. And so just like you take a Christian, yet born again, and just drop him off, nobody knows to help him, he wouldn't last. The devil would see to that. So, so what we're doing, we're trying to help one another to develop and grow so that all of us can be effective in helping what? Others do the same thing. Are you still here? Okay. Now, God himself in, 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 in establishing the human race, getting them to understand this new order that's coming in, he, he met a man, he came to a man by the name of Abraham. And so other, before Abraham... Men on the earth knew nothing about getting born again. They knew nothing about the requirement that was needed for a human to meet God face to face. They knew nothing about it. Because they, through Adam, we, made, you know, we, separate, we were separated from God. You know the story. But then God came to a man by the name of Abraham, and he, what, what he had to do, he had to come to Abraham, teach Abraham, train him about this faith thing. Faith is what we need in order to operate as a spirit man on the earth. You need to understand faith because because other because number one you you can't see a spirit. You can't see God. God's a spirit. You can't see the devil. He's a spirit. And you need to know something about him to deal with him because he'll kill you. He's not nice like God. So you need to understand how do I interact and deal with the spirit world, a world that I cannot see, but yet it's more real than the natural one that I do see. The spirit world is a world of a higher order than the natural world. And so I need to understand the principles of operating in that world because if I don't, then I'll I'll, I'll, I'll be be lost. And I will, in the the spirit beings that's out there, those that's on the negative side will override me, get me all messed up, and I'll never be able to be any good at all 
because there is a negative spirit world. It's called the devil and all of his cohort. And he is a, he, you can't see him, but he's there and he'll mess you up. Anybody knows that a spirit being can always outwit a natural being because you can't see the spirit. Anybody remember that show that used to be on TV called The Invisible Man? Long time, got to be pretty old to remember that. You let you, you tell your age if you tell me you remember. That was a long time ago. You look down the street and you see a suitcase, a briefcase walking down the street swinging. And you look, he's called the invisible man. You stand around some, somebody's tapping, lock, tap, tap you upside the head and you jump and look don't see nobody. That's him. Well, that's about a picture of the devil is ever bigger picture of the devil has ever I've seen. You know what I mean? That must have been whoever made that. <laughs> yeah, because that's what the devil is. He's a spirit being and he'll irritate and agitate you and you can't see him. You see, and he'll mess you up. But God is, a, is he's, he's invisible too, but he's the, good, he's the good God. He is the one that will do good things for you when you can't see him. And he'll want to call good things to happen for you and you wonder how it happened. God took care of that. You follow what I'm saying? So he wants us to develop and grow into this. But God had to teach us. He had to teach us faith. Because faith is the key in knowing how to operate in an, in, in, an, in an unseen world. It's by faith. It's by faith in the word of God that will teach and show us how to be effective and how to operate in a spirit world still as a natural man on the earth. Hallelujah. That's what, that's, 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 what we, that's what we are trying to learn here and find out. And God is the teacher of this. And so he comes to a man by the name of Abraham, and he teaches Abraham faith. He teaches him faith so that, and then he calls him the father of all, father of the faithful. He teaches him faith. And so what he does, he he tells Abraham things. And here's the principle of faith. The principles of faith is receive a solid, sound word. That is the word of God. Don't, don't listen to no other words but God's words. Don't listen to no other false words. Don't listen. Don't just nothing. When you don't see something and you are, you are hearing words that's going to energize you, that's going to connect you to those, then make sure that they are God's words. Because God will speak words to you, and what will happen is the words that God speaks to you, if you will embrace those words and believe them, then the word, whatever the word says, that will come to pass. That's faith. God created the world with faith. You, you read, you've, read, you've read the creation account of the creation, what God would do, he would say things and then the thing that he said would come to pass. Hallelujah. Boy, that's faith. And then he, then he said, okay, now I'm going to teach you guys how to operate this faith thing. Then he, teach, he said, now, whoever comes to me and believe that I am, whoever comes to God and believe that he is and that he is a what? Rewarder of those who what? Diligently seek him. Believe that. Believe that. Then he told us, he said, now I'll tell you what you do. Say to the mountain, don't you doubt in your heart, but believe that those things which you said will come to pass, it will have what you say. Hallelujah. That's where faith works. And so God is teaching us, but he came to him because man know nothing about faith. He know nothing about faith. And he came, he came to a man by the name of Abraham and he spoke to Abraham and he talked with Abraham and he taught Abraham faith and therefore he called God Abraham the father of the faithful. Abraham is called the father of faith. The father of faith. Because he, what? he taught Abraham, God taught Abraham faith and then, and then Abraham believed God. Yeah. Now let's look at the scripture. That we're, scripture that, yeah, yeah. Now look at Romans chapter 4. All that to get to this. Romans chapter 4, picking up at the 19th verse. And not, and not being weak in faith. Hallelujah. Who are you talking about? Abraham. He did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old 
and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, or he grew strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he, God, had promised, he was also able to perform. That's a picture of a class that God taught Abraham, yeah. teaching him faith. Yeah. Hallelujah. So what have this God came to a man by the name of Abraham, this cre the creator of heaven and earth, he, and he, he would say things to him. And what he would do to make sure that this thing took, he would say things to him that was totally impossible yeah. in the natural realm. But if he can get Abraham to believe it, see, with God, all things are possible. Nothing is impossible with God. But with man, everything is impossible. So what God has to do, he has to train this man how to operate like him. He got to train this man how to believe something and say it and it'll come to pass. And that's what he did to Abraham. He came to Abraham. And so, so, here's the, so what, is the, what is the acid test? The acid test that God used to train Abraham in faith, he used his own physical body. Now, let's take a look here. Let's go over to the 17th chapter of, of Genesis. Genesis chapter number 17. What, is, what are we looking at here? We're looking at God teaching and training Abraham how to operate in faith because faith is the highest order of operation for a man. It's the highest order of operation. It's going beyond the natural. It's, going, it's tapping into the supernatural power of God yeah. by using your mouth to speak and your heart to believe, and whatever you believe in your heart and say with your mouth, it will come to pass. I don't care how outlandish it was. And so what does God use? God uses a very strange illustration. He uses a, oh, he uses something amazing here. He promises Abraham, Abraham is 100 years old. And he told him, I'm gonna, I'm, <laughs> you're going to have a son. Tickling. They tickle Abraham. It's so outlandish he laughed. He laughed at it. It's, it's outlandish. Why? Now, God could have came to Abraham and hit when he was 21 and Sarah being 18. It would have been perfect. He would have, have jumped up and clapped his heels twice. But no. No. I mean, that's, see, that's something within the reach of the human. See, God teaches us. He takes us above the ability of the human. And he tells us now, I want you to, I'm going to tell you this, and then you say it and believe it. You believe what I'm saying, and then you say it, and it's coming to pass. It's not magic. It's faith. See, the devil do all kinds of tricks. He do tricks too. He do tricks. That's what he does. That's what they are, tricks. But he call that magic. You ever been to a magic show? I don't recommend it. No. God is teaching us faith. He is teaching the human race faith. He is teaching the human race how to, because see, actually, we are created in the God family. See, go, see, we are alive because God breathed himself into us. When God made Adam, he breathed into his nostrils himself. He put a part of himself inside of the man, and the man became a living soul. Look at a man walking around. How can you? You don't have to plug him in nothing. You don't plug him in at night. You don't charge him up. You don't do nothing. How does he keep running like that? He's God in him. It's supernatural God. And he'll walk around on this earth a hundred or so years. He'll walk around, yeah, uncharged. You don't never charge him up. No plug him up, nothing. Self-sustained. How do you do that? It's God, that's the God in him. God made him. God formed them of the dust of the earth. 
But then he was nothing but a dead hunk of, hunk of clay there. But then when God breathed into him, when God breathed himself into him, which is unseen, ha, you can't see a breath. He breathed himself in him, and then the life of God went inside of that clay, and that clay got him walked around and talked. Yeah. See what I mean? That's God himself. So God had to teach him. So I'm going to teach him. Now I'm going to teach you how to, how to create things yourself. I'm going to teach you how to do that. And so I'm going to teach you how to live above the natural. You are a natural being, but I'm going to teach you how to live above the natural because I got a life, I got a plan for you as soon as this body wear out that you, that because of your sin, the thing ain't going to last. Now I got to, but, but, but you will live on when I teach you how to be like me. I'm going to teach you, hallelujah, how to be like, I'm going to teach you how to walk by, I'm going to teach you how to operate without, I'm going to teach you how you can operate without a physical body. Hallelujah, glory to God. So God comes in and he starts teaching Abraham. And so he comes in so he goes in there and he selects something that's out of the reach of Abraham. Abraham knows that he can't do this. That's why I tickle him. Watch this. In the, sep- in the 17th chapter of the gospel uh, of, 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 of Genesis, Genesis chapter number 17, verse 16 says, And God said to him, I will bless her and also give you a son by her. 15 says, then God said to Abraham, as for Sarah, your wife, you shall call, you should not call her Sarah, Sarah, but Sarah, <coughs> but Sarah shall be her name. And then he said, I will bless her and also give you a son by her. Yeah. Then I will bless her. She shall be a mother of nations, kings and people shall be from her. Abraham, verse 17, then Abraham fell on his face and laughed. Tickle him. It's just outlandish. He fell on his face and laughed. Said in his heart, shall a child be born to a man who is 100 years old? And shall Sarah, who is 90 years old, bear a child? Ha! That'll tickle the average person. He thought it was funny. But, but, but what am I saying here? I'm trying to show you that God is introducing another level of life to a, to a human man. He is taking him up. He is telling him, because of who you are, you are made of by, by me. I'm going to teach you how to operate at a level above the natural. Woo, hallelujah. That's why we Christians today should be live, should be having a field day here on the earth. Because God has taught and trained us how to live above the beggarly elements of this world. How to be on this earth, but yet live above this earth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm enjoying it. Hallelujah. Because I live by faith. I don't live in the natural. Bless God, I live by faith. Because I believe God. And I have a, I have a, I live a, I have a victory victorious life. I'm a human man on this earth living at heaven standards, living by faith, living at a God standard, living by faith. Hallelujah. Well, he taught Abraham this faith. He come to him and told him, you will have a son and you're 100. Sarah is 90. That's pretty good. But now watch this. Abraham, oh, come on. It was just so outlandish to him to tickle him. He just laughed at all. But, 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 that's, but I want you to understand God is training us to live by faith because the level of faith is above the natural. And you would be surprised at the number of Christians that still today in, in 2023 does, is still living at a natural level. They say, I'm saved and born again, going to heaven when I die, but everything is just as natural as can be. Child, you're living beneath your privileges. I'm telling you, if you are just still living in the natural, you are living beneath your privileges. God has taught us how to live above this earth. The, that's, see, that's the, that's the appeal. That's the calling card. That's what we use to lure the world into the kingdom of God. We use the supernatural power of God. 
You ever notice, go back in the book of Acts, when God would perform these miracles, Jesus would perform these, even when Jesus was on earth, when he had born them, bro, he got everybody's attention. Bless God, he go to there and open, the, dig, dig, open up the grave of Lazarus and get up from there, boy. Old boy dead, been dead for three days, three, four days. How long have he been dead? He, she said, she said, dead long than been smelling. But he said, get up from there. And Lazarus gets up. Man, that'll get your attention. That'll get your attention, boy. Well, well he, all he's doing is operating by faith. He is teaching and showing what faith will do. Well, God is teaching, the, he is teaching the earth. He is teaching the human race about faith. And this faith will work uh, in the earth realm, but it's above the natural. Because faith comes from God. Faith is a result of believing God's words enough to speak them and you will have what you say. Child of God, listen to this. This is what you and I need. I tell you, dear God, when you understand the principles of faith and begin to develop your faith and let your faith grow, we're talking about growing health. The way you have good health is you grow it. And bless God, when you grow your own, you don't have to worry about whether it's defective or not. I grow my own, hallelujah. I grow my faith. I'm not expecting the doctors to give me health. I'm not expecting the hospital to give me health. You know, people worry, well, you know, I got this good hospitalization plan. Well, good, you got a good one. I got this good doctor. Good, you keep him, you need him. But I got one better than that. God has taught me and is teaching me, and my faith is growing, and my health is growing. Because I'm learning more and more about faith. I'm learning how to what? Simply believe what God said. The father of the faithful, the father of faith was, is, is taught and trained by God to walk in faith. And the, and the lesson that God uses to train him with is telling him, he is telling him that he's going to have a son. Something that's out, and if all he got to do is believe this, if he'll, believe, if he'll believe this and act on it, he'll have him. Well, this is exactly what he did. So listen to what he says here. Abraham said to God, verse 18, Oh, that Ishmael might live before me. Now, here's, the, here's what, no, no, no. Your, faith, your flesh is going to always fight faith because it's, it's out of the reach of flesh. Listen to me, I'm, we're trying, I'm trying to teach you some principles, how to develop and grow your own faith, grow your own health. I mean, isn't it better to be grow your own stuff than trying to go borrow something from somebody else? Grow your own. You don't want to be every time, every time the devil slap you upside the head, you got to go call somebody to come pray for you. Grow your own faith. Grow your own health. You know what I mean? Because you know, that devil come at you at here in the middle of the night. Well, you ain't be calling about two or three o'clock in the morning. If you call waking him up at two o'clock, you ain't no faith there. You made him mad. You know what I mean? So you, you follow him, so you grow your own. Grow your own love. Grow your own healing. Grow your own faith. Well, well, God is teaching us how to do that. But now what God does here, he is, the lesson that he's given him is so outlandish. And so what Abraham does, he bounces back with an alternative because that is exactly what the flesh will do. When God speaks, the flesh will always come up with an alternative that's easy. God said, you're going to have a son. He said, oh, no, what about losing Ishmael? He's already here. We already got him. God said, no. Do, do you see how this works? Do, do you see? See, you're going to have to learn. See, I know. See, listen, it is so easy just going down to the dispensary. Isn't that easy? Oh, just go down to the dispensary. Yeah, that's all right. As long as the dispensary, but there's some stuff that the dispensary can't handle. So you better learn how to get, your, get it from God. Now, I'm not telling you not to use the dispensary. Go ahead and use the dispensary. But I'm telling you, don't I wouldn't depend on that. Because there's a, I'm, I'm telling you, that devil going to shoot something at you that they don't have no answer for down at the dispensary. Are you still here? So you need to learn. Listen, every child that God has must learn how to operate by faith if he is going to be successful in the earth. This, the natural mind, always seeks an easy out. 
When God said, you're going to have a son at 100, Abraham immediately reduces the responsibility and said, well, why can't we just go with Ishmael? He's already here. Now, Ishmael is that boy that he had by Hagar, you know, that Hagar girl. Remember that? Because God had already been talking to him about this, and he, 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 said he took, it in, took it upon himself, I'll do it. I'll do it. I know how. And he went and got that Hagar girl, you know, you know he's full of, full of fire. Yeah. Ishmael is, at this time, Ishmael is about 18 years old or so. And he wants to use Ishmael to be the seed, God said. Oh, boy, see that? You see what I'm talking about? Abraham said to God, oh, that Ishmael might live before you. Then God said, no. Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. But God, but God, I'm a hundred. I'm a hundred. She's 90. You. She's going to be your be a better child. Amen. And you're going to be the father. Yeah. Back to the drawing board. I'm showing this because this is exactly what we do. When God speaks, we are always trying to look for an exit. Yeah. To do it an easier way. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it, 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 it'll tell on us. It'll, our, all our unbelief will come to the surface. And I'm talking about the church itself. You know I mean? we, always, the church, we always want to e- ease away, ease away. Can you give me an easier way? God said, what did I tell you? What does my word say? Didn't I tell you that no evil would befall you? Amen. Didn't I tell you that no plague was going to come near your dwelling? Well, what you, are what you all scared about? What are you afraid of? But the world, he said, am I talking to the world or talking to you? The world don't just do what they know to do. The world going to use Ishmael and not even ask God a question. The world the world not even going to think about this. The world going to just go and use Ishmael for, the, for, the, for their father and go on about the business. And they ain't going to even ask, say a word to God. He said, no. But you. See, we want to, see, we want to do stuff that we can understand. We, don't, we, we do not want to step out where we can't see where our foot's going. God will tell you. He said, you just step out there. But I can't see. God said, I got a platform down there for you. You can't see it, but you got to step out. You're going to have to step out there to prove that it. That's, that's, that's where faith kicks in. Do you see the difference in faith and your natural understanding? Faith is when you have exhausted your abilities and understanding. Faith kicks in when your abilities and your understandings has been exhausted and you still will step out. And the standard of faith has not changed since the time that God established it with Abraham. It has not, and he is not going to change it in 2023 either. I'm telling you, I don't care. I don't care. You can tell, well, 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 this is the modern, I don't care how modern it is. God, he's not going to require Abraham to do something that you are not required to do. Amen. And we better understand that. Faith has a standard. That's how you got born again. If you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. Wow. 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 Now, we mimic a lot of stuff because you don't have to prove anything. We just mimic it and say, yeah, 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 I believe. You know, you know, but I tell you what, when, it, when, it, when, it, when the water gets thick, we'll find out what you believe. And that's exactly what you see. You see a lot of this on the earth. Everybody say, yeah, I believe, I believe. Yeah, yeah, you believe, all right, here, till, till the water gets thick, until the lights go out. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know where you're going. Ha! 
couple of years ago, the devil come through here and he just blew a bad wind. Everybody went ballistic. Uh, uh, what happened to your faith? Oh, you better take care of yourself. <laughs> Dear God, I said, what in the world has happened to the church? <laughs> so you think that was just a coincidence? That wasn't no coincidence. Uh, wasn't no coincidence. It's a proof. It's a proof of where you are, and you have seen the fallout from it. You have seen the fallout from it, and it ain't over yet. Ballistic panic. Well, what happened to your faith? I thought you was a faith person. Yeah, as long as I can see it, I can see. Ish- I can see Ishmael. But this kid you're talking about that ain't born yet and the prospective mother is 90 and the prospective father is 100. Ah, you're going to have to use some sense. Yeah, boy. You ever hear that term? Well, you better use some sense. Don't you see? Don't you see? Don't you see how we have to locate ourselves? See, if you locate yourself, God will deliver you out of it and develop your faith and you'll move on forward. But as long as you're making excuses for your unbelief, you are going nowhere. I'll tell you that right up front. I don't care who you are. I don't care if it's me. I don't care who it is. When I, as long as I'm making excuses for my failure and making excuses for my lack of faith, I'm going to stay right there. And I'm not going anywhere. And, 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 and with God, just because you fail a test, you don't just, he don't just skip you over, you don't skip no grade. You can pass that before you go anywhere. Yeah, but I took it and I failed. Yeah, well, you're going to take it again. See, if you still having sense, you're going to have to have sense again. I'm telling you right now, it's not, the, the, the test is not going to change just because you, you fail it. And I'm a, that's the fact. We better, we better understand it because we are the church and we are not a practice church. We are not one. We are not, a, we are, we are, we are not a practice church. We are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this one is, is going to be pure and holy or it ain't going to be. I'm telling you right now. There's no such thing as a substandard church. There's no such thing as a second rate or second class church. It's going to be a church of faith in God, or it's not going to be. Now, people, we're going to have to understand that. And I'm not going to preach any watered-down gospel to you. And for you that are listening out there on, on, on the airways, you're sitting around making excuses that you're going to have to quit that and get this Bible and believe it. I'm just being honest with you. I'm telling you the truth. I have to tell it to you whether you do it or not. Now, you can, you, can, you can play games if you want to, but if you play games, the devil will keep you in a tailspin all your earthly life. But God's not going for Ishmael. You're going to have a son. You, a 100-year-old Abraham and a 90-year-old Sarah, you're going to have a son. That's who I'm going to raise up. That's who I'm going to raise up as a nation. This is the father of the Jewish nation that God raised up on the earth out of which came Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. It had to be that way. Otherwise, we would not have had a faith Jesus. If the seed is not faith, then the products cannot be faith. God got to raise up somebody that will go to that cross and lay down his life for you and I. And it has to be a faith person that does it. The standards is not going to be lifted. And the standards is not going to be altered. And it's not going to get any better. Next year is not going to be any better than last year. You're going to walk in the same faith this year that was set before you last year. And the same faith that following you, the faith, there has not been a deterioration, there has not been a reduction in the standard of faith since God established it on the earth, and it's not going to be. If you're just waiting around to see what's going to happen, I can tell you what's going to happen. Nothing. The happening is going to have to take place within you, and it's going to be when you decide to say, okay, Isaac, it will be. Yeah. Not Ishmael. 
And God's going, he'll, he'll wait for the next generation. God is not in a time frame. Amen. We need to understand that. Time is for us. God's operating out of eternity. Time is designed for us. Did you ever notice? I don't care. Did you ever, ever watch? See, that was, this is not the first snag, the time the devil tried to slow down God's plan. Look at the thing that Israel went to, even after they was raised up into a nation. And they, they, would, just go, they would just go bad, and God just wait on for the next one. Wait for the next generation. Wait for the next generation. Wait for the next. You want to act that? Remember that, remember that time in the wilderness? That bunch got to running around that cow there? And God said, okay. Let them die right here. But God, that's going to take a whole 40 years, so. Doesn't bother me. I don't buy no 40 years. You do. I don't. <laughs> to me, a thousand years is like a day to me. I don't know. What, what, what's that with you? So you want to run around? Go ahead. Chase the cow. I'll wait for the next generation. They did. You want to go over? Yeah, we, 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 yeah, we going. We going. Yeah, yeah. We don't want to stay. Uh, all right, all right. Okay, so you got it. You see what? Do you see? Do you think God's going to change the church just because you don't have any faith? Do you think God's going to change the church just because you wanted? You just trying to do everything in the natural? No, no, no. The church is not going to change. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is a faith yeah. church. And you are, you, are, you will be determined by your faith. Your faith will identify you. Faith gets God's attention. When you choose the God way, I'm not looking for the easy out. I'm not looking for a shortcut. Just the way God said it, that's where I agree with it. Now, here's what I want us to understand. It is not your responsibility to make faith work. Amen. And I think that's what we get messed up at. It's not your responsibility to make faith work. All you and I are required to do is to follow the principles of faith. Amen. Hear and believe. That's not an emotional act. That is a choice, matter of choice. It's something that you choose. Faith does not operate on your emotions. It's not a result of your emotional feeling. Amen. You hear what God says and you believe what God says. And you will have what God says. Amen. Now, Let's look at the word. Here's what, here, this is exactly what the word says. In Romans 4, 19, and not being weak in faith, this is, a, this is the same Abraham here, yes, sir. but that's the New Testament. Of course, God's not in a time frame. This is the same Abraham that, that Paul is writing about. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body so when God told him that you're going to be the father and he tried to push off Ishmael, then he found out that God ain't going to go for Ishmael. Then he went back to the drawing board and he said, okay, how shall I do this? Hmm, hmm, how am I going to do this? He said, okay, I'm going to quit looking at you. Good move, Abe, good move, good move. Why should you keep looking at something that looks impossible? All you're going to do is, help you, is just feed your unbelief. That's, that's all you're going to do. He said, I'm not going to look at you. He wouldn't look in the mirror. I'm just, I'm just showing you the principle. I'm just, and you can, learn, you can learn what you can. You'll find out what you got to do. See, I, I don't want nobody to keep telling me what I got. I don't want you to keep telling me that. I want you to tell. If you got anything to tell me, tell me how to get rid of it. Don't tell me. Don't, I don't want, don't, don't tell, don't, don't. Don't tell me what I, what I got and what it's going to do to me. Don't, I don't want to hear that because that's not, that's not helping my faith. See, Abraham, Abraham quit looking at his old body. He quit looking at his body. Listen, and being not weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old. He quit looking at himself. He quit looking at, he quit counting his birthdays. He gave up the birthday parties. 
Because I don't need to, I don't need to, I don't need to know. I don't need to know about that. And lastly, he quit looking at Sarah. So, sister, you go and go take a shower. I, I, I don't I, go on down the creek somewhere. I don't want to see it. Because I got I'm working on something here. He didn't look at her. I'm just showing him what he said. He's, what is he doing? He is working, he's developing his faith. Because I don't want to see nothing that's going to cause unbelief in me. I don't want to see or hear anything. Don't, don't talk about it. I don't even want you to talk about it to me. Because I'm looking at something else. I'm looking at Isaac. I'm not looking at you. I'm not looking at me. I'm not, I'm not talking about this. I'm not talking about this negative. I'm not talking about that. I want to talk about what the Bible says I can have. If it's not what the Bible says I can have, don't talk to me. I don't want you to come. Don't do no, don't do, don't do no, you know, them, them, those friends of Judge, <laughs> those friends of Job. <laughs> Dear Lord, you ain't no friends like that. They come in and sit there the same day, wouldn't part the lips. Man, well, I'd rather you to sit there with and say something. But then when you start talking, you're saying the wrong thing. I'm, whoa, whoa, that's worse. You, don't, you see what, don't you see what we're saying? What are we saying? See, we, see, we need to understand faith. He is, Abraham did not say, he is not saying he's not 100. He just wouldn't look at himself. He just wouldn't look at 100. See, 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 saying that's not, that, that, that's, that's not faith. Faith is not considering it. Faith is considering your desires. As, and, and your desires should be what God has said. Don't, don't, don't you see how to deal? Now, now watch this. When it comes to us growing our faith, watch this. When it comes to us growing our health, growing our health, because that's what we're talking about, grow your own health. So don't look, don't spend your time staring at the doctor's report. Don't do that. Don't be calling everybody up telling them what you got because they're just going to help keep you in bondage. You, st- you, you look at something else. See, look at, look at what, see, look, this, is, this is a formula here. Look at it. Let, let's look at it again from the scripture. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead. He didn't look at it. He didn't consider it. He did not consider his body. He was 100 years old. Why you kept looking at a 100-year-old body? And then he look at And the deadness of certain women, he wouldn't look at her either. Because she ain't no better than he is. He would look at, he wouldn't look. But yet God is telling me that she is going to have my son. That. You see what I mean? People, this is real. This actually happened. This is not a fairy tale conjured up by God. This actually happened happened to a man by the name of Abraham on this very planet that we're on right now. He did not consider. So let's look, let's make this a principle here. Okay. What do I need to do in order to grow my health? What has God said about my health? Now, I can see what it is. I don't want to see that. So I won't look at that. So Abraham wouldn't look at his body. I'm not going to look at mine either. I'm not going to consider it. Well, what am I going to consider? Consider Jesus. Now, listen listen to this. See if you can receive this. This is Isaiah 53, 5 in the Amplified Classic. But he, Jesus, was wounded for my transgression. Ah. He was bruised for our guilt 
and iniquities. Ah. The chastisement needful to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon him. That's what I think I'll look at. Can you receive this? Amen. That's what I'm going to look at. I'm not going to look at my old whatever, bad toe, whatever you got. I'm going to look at what Jesus has done about the bad toe. Oh, yeah. Now, what Jesus has done and what I might see may be two different things. What God said to Abraham and what Abraham saw when he looked in the mirror was two different things. God said, you are going to be the father of Isaac and Sarah is going to be the mother of Isaac. He would not consider that. Because as long as I'm looking at that, ain't nothing going to happen. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing is going to change. Nothing is going to change. Nothing is going to change if I keep looking at that. Amen. So I won't consider. So fast forward. Abraham taking care. He, Abraham has already run his race. He's finished. I'm on this earth now. This is my generation. How am I going to get through this? Well, all of the negative, negative environments and the negative circumstances, I'm not going to look at them. But I'm going to look at the solution that God has designed to rectify that. Can you receive that? Amen. See, faith is not a trick game. You have an impossible situation here, and you have God doing the talking. God Almighty will take impossibilities and turn them into possibilities. You got to believe that. This God that's so loving and so powerful, his words are just like him. There is no difference in his word and him. He has already said when his word goes out of his mouth, it will not return to him void but that it will do exactly what he sent it out to do. It will override anything else that was tried to block it. And so what my responsibilities are is to embrace the words of God and meditate them and believe them and watch his words transform this impossible situation into a possible one. That's what we're talking about. Now listen to me. This is important. This does not happen overnight. When God first spoke to Abraham about this nation, about this great event, Abraham was 75 years old. Go back to the 12th chapter of Genesis and read it. He is 75 years old when God makes, makes speech to him to make him this promise. And it is 25 years before Isaac is born. Do you see that? What am I saying? You are going to have to grow your faith you're not going to go in and read one healing scripture and jump up and dance a tango. No, it's not going to work that way. You're going to attend to this word. You're going to incline your ear under what God is saying. You're going to keep this word in the midst of your heart. And you're going to do what God says do. And then watch the word of God be performed in your life. That's the way you grow your health. And if you find it, and, 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 if you, and, 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 and there's no other way, don't even forget about them other ways. It is by faith or it is not. God has already spoken and has already qualified you to be healed. He said to the, Jesus said to that woman, he says, you are a daughter of Abraham. You ought to be healed. I am a son of God. I ought to be healed. 
but the responsibility is given to me is to hear and believe. Amen. When I hear and believe, then I will have what I say. Can you receive that? Amen. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What, are we, what, is the, what is the bottom line? My son, attend to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Don't let my words depart from your eyes, but keep them in the midst of your heart, for my words are life unto those that find them, and my words are health to all their flesh. And you feed that word into your spirit and allow yourself to what? Grow in the grace. Father, we thank you today. You have been so gentle and kind to us today to teach us the simple principles of growing our health that we might fulfill the purpose and calling that you have placed in us. You have left us here for a purpose because you are not willing that any should perish and you want all to come to repentance. And we are the ones that have been given to take this gospel to a dying world. And I thank you for this, Father. And we shall fulfill the purpose and call that you have placed in us. And your will will be done in the earth as you have so desired. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Let's go do it. Are you ready? Amen. Then bless God, let's go get it done. Hallelujah. Glory to God.